Let's react to Brett Cooper's video called Gen Z, the generation of body alteration. Oh, he's trying to be taller. Yeah, I mean, I've heard of these surgeries. I obviously don't perform them. As you guys know, I'm more focused on the scalp and the face. But, you know, this is something that people are doing for, I guess, cosmetic elective reasons. I think uh, it carries a lot of risk to do limb lengthening. But let's see how she reacts to this. Love that face in pain. <laughs> and it just seems like such a long recovery with so many potential complications. It's hard to believe that some people see that the benefits of that outweigh the risks. So that was a man getting limb lengthening surgery. He went from 5'5 five five to 6 feet. They put stints in his legs. This on Twitter has 69.6 .6 million views. I get wanting to be taller. I get it. When I was younger, I wanted to be six feet tall because my brothers are over six feet. I get it. I would never lengthen my that's just it's insane like his upper body looked jacked he was obviously working out so you like saw this like sick gym video yeah you know getting a pump on and then he can barely walk because he has metal rods in his legs yeah i definitely worry about like the long-term complications of that type of surgery because if you have metal in your legs i mean that can get infected down the road somebody said all of that to just put six feet on a dating profile and your tinder profile better be lit after this dude I think most people lie about their height anyway on those profiles, so I'm not sure if they give you bonus points for accuracy. One person said, is it really worth it? And then posted a screenshot of the apparent side effects of getting the surgery, which is nerve damage, muscle damage, joint contracture, dislocations, and arthritis. Yeah, I mean, there's going to be risks to every surgery that can definitely sound like very scary. But my gut tells me that there are going to be short term risks related to just the specific um, surgery and the immediate recovery, but then also some long-term risks and, comp and potential complications of having you know, metal in your leg, of having had to break the bone in order to lengthen it. But there were a lot of dudes in the comments that were actually interested in it and were like, I had no idea this was a thing. Like, how do you do this? Where do you go for this? Which made me think of something that's a lot bigger because obviously, like I said, almost 70 million views on one platform alone, and that's just one version of the video. But people are freaking out about this man making cosmetic changes to his body. Like, this is so shocking. This is so crazy. But this happens every day for women. Women are constantly doing this. Maybe not, you know, lengthening their legs, but going to extremes to artificially change their bodies. Like my social media accounts are flooded with women getting plastic surgery and altering the way that they look. Women, you know, also get cosmetic plastic surgery, whether it's um, sometimes just the non-surgical injectables or surgery to alter their uh, appearance in a more permanent way. And that's something that's been going on for a very long time but only, I would say, in recent years is becoming more uh, popularized through social media and the like. There's no 70 million views over a girl getting some, you know, crazy BBL or boob job saying, oh my God, I can't believe you're doing this. Do you, do you know the side effects of, you know, getting silicone implants into your boobs? No, it's like, oh my God, yes, queen, this is so amazing. It's like, what's the difference? Like, do we want people to artificially change their bodies or not? It's a weird double standard between men and women, I guess. But the thing that shocks me the most is how young these procedures are happening for women and that's kind of what i want to hone in on here because it reminded me of all of this but just like look at some of these videos yeah i think she brings up a good point here and we've talked about this especially many you know celebrities are getting their uh, facelifts done at a much younger age than was ever performed before like in their 20s and early 30s and that that's a newer trend and most people used to wait till later in life to get these types of procedures so yes i think more people are getting cosmetic plastic surgery uh, at younger ages now than they used to before. So obviously that is not as extreme as limb lengthening, but like getting Botox at age 19. Here's another one, more Botox. Okay, I started Botox when I was 19 because like, I just wanted to. <laughs> It's all preventative and I just... Yeah, I mean, 19 is going to be too young. Uh, most people for preventative Botox start in their mid to late 20s. 
um, not in their teenage years. You know, again, Botox, like anything else, can have real side effects. Botox is such a huge thing on TikTok right now. And again, I'm acknowledging that it's not as extreme as limb lengthening, but everybody freaking out about that video in the comments, I was like, have you literally not even spent five minutes on a girl's for you page on TikTok? Because it's all of this and it's just so normal. This is a well-documented epidemic, if you want to call it. Somebody said, tweak mints and Botox, the Gen Z plastic surgery craze, from peer pressure to plastic surgery, why more and more teens may be opting to go under the knife. Again, not just Botox. Gen Z's obsession with plastic surgery hits new highs. Experts report spike in clients under 30. Gen Z plastic surgery craze hits all-time high. I want to feel... I think there's a fine line here between normalizing plastic surgery, where it's more accepted and um, less like swept under the rug, and also the other extreme, which is to say that everyone should just get this or else you're going to feel you know, left out because you haven't had any plastic surgery. For the longest time, plastic surgery was something that was a little bit more for the uh, elite members of society, and it was seldom talked about. How does she look like that? I Nine times out of 10 these days, it's very sad, but it's because of plastic surgery. If you're wondering why your natural body does not look like that, number one, because everybody is built different. Number two, because people go under the knife like no other these days. And also keep in mind that the result of a plastic surgery will often depend on your starting anatomy. And of course, your goals and, and the, the surgeon's abilities. But a lot of times it'll depend on where you're starting. So some people bring me photos and they're like, hey, I want to look like this person. And the starting anatomy can be totally different. We can't make them look like someone that they're not. Prior to, I think, this era, like with the Kardashians and the celebrities of like 10 years ago, everybody was super quiet about plastic surgery. It's like, no, I, I didn't get I didn't get any plastic surgery. It's like, no, bullshit. You absolutely did. These days, everybody's just talking very openly about it, which I guess is good because we're not lying. But I also see this as being harmful for young viewers who are watching these kinds of procedures become normal. Like here, Alex is talking about her boob job. Get ready with me to celebrate my boob anniversary. So I got my breast augmentation. Yeah, I think the problem is that people don't talk about about complications enough because that would really balance out the conversation and maybe surgeons are also to partially blame for this because we mostly show our best work and we oftentimes don't discuss complications and things that didn't go as well so that sets unrealistic expectations for people who then are going in to get plastic surgery done like I've said it before, but I almost got a nose job at the end of high school. I hated my nose so much growing up. I thought it was way too big for my face. I had friends like elementary school through middle school who would come up to me like, oh, you have a boobable nose and would literally like hit me in the face with my nose and that kind of thing. But I knew that I could get it fixed relatively easily and get this kind of, you know, ski slope nose. I'm like, oh, I'd be so cute. That's what I always wanted. And I'm so glad that I didn't. I'm so glad I didn't. I love my nose now, but I would be walking around with this fake piece of me. Is this really the message that we want to be sending to young people? That if you don't like the body that you were born into, that you can just change everything about yourself to make yourself feel more whole, artificially. Yeah, I mean, I think she brings up a really valid point that is difficult to argue with. You know, keep in mind that, at least in my practice, the average age of patients who come in for, say, the lip surgeries that we do or the hair transplant surgeries that we do is 35. So these are people who, you know, have had time to consider pros and cons of surgery and have lived enough to, you know, have a fully mature brain and they can make a decision as to, you know, what makes the most sense for them. This is insane. We need to stop pushing body disfigurement as a society. People are perfect as they are. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Example, in Dubai, there is more Botox lips than actual lips. And this guy's right. It is very- Probably talking about filler lips, but- it's the same idea. Very rare to see people, especially online, who are totally natural these days and are very comfortable with it and embrace it. So I urge you to do the same and embrace it. You were designed this way for a reason. You do not need to go fill your face and your body with literal toxins. That's what Botox is. Artificial things like nose jobs in order to feel whole, to feel like a better version of yourself. You do not need to do that. You are totally unique, which is a good thing. What I try to do with all of my videos is to spread body positivity, and no one needs any of these cosmetic plastic surgeries. However, there is a place for them in our society if patients are selected properly and if the actual procedures are performed well. I do think we need to learn how to balance the sharing of information about the surgeries that we get with not making others feel bad and putting them into a position where they now feel obligated to get the same surgery. Thanks, Brett, for a really nice video, and I hope you enjoyed the reaction. Make sure to subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one.